Hi, uh, my name is Ella Sommer and I go to, to University of Virginia. Welcome to my presentation on evaluating defensive backs by the random player effects. So the question that I'm aiming to answer is can defensive backs be evaluated on more than their ability to stop a pass from being complete? PFF currently grades players in coverage only when they're targeted, also known as a target-driven grading system. The problem with this is that it excludes players who aren't directly involved with the play. So for example, look at this play in week 15 of the 2018 season, where the Green Bay Packers were playing the Chicago Bears. Here, there's an incomplete pass from Aaron Rodgers thrown to Devontae Adams. Was Kyle Fuller truly the best defensive back for Aaron Rodgers to target? Or is there a possibility of like an Eddie Jackson effect where Eddie Jackson's on the field and he's deterring quarterbacks from going to, throwing to him purely because he's known as being a very good defensive back. There can also be a possibility of other defensive backs on the field shutting down their receivers even before Rodgers made his decision to throw the ball. So to answer this question, I created two types of models, one both being a target probability model and then one being a completion probability model. In my target probability model, the question I aimed to answer was, what is the probability of the defensive back being targeted in the first place? Through this, my important predictors included defense, the defensive back's total separation from his nearest receiver at pass release, his distance to the ball at pass release, the depth of the receiver, the defensive back's speed at pass release, and then the difference in height between the defensive back and the wide receiver. The question I aim to answer in my completion probability model is given the defensive back is targeted, what is the probability of the catch being completed? And these important predictors, once the model was output, include the defensive back's total separation from his nearest receiver at pass arrival, the defensive back's distance to the ball at pass arrival, the depth of the targeted receiver, and the receiver's cumulative distance run in the play at the pass release. From my two models, it basically captures two different types of player effects. Each defensive back in the 2018 season has now been given two metrics, both a target probability effect and a completion probability effect. The target probability effect is the percentage that this defensive back is targeted below or above the average defensive back in the NFL. And the completion probability effect is the percentage that this defensive back draws a completion below or above the average defensive back in the NFL. So one player that really stood out to me was a player named Tavon Young. His PFF coverage grade was 62.6, .6, so wasn't anything blaringly great. However, his target probability effect was negative 0.2, which otherwise means that he has targeted 12% less than the average defensive back. Because of this, it might be possible that he's actually undervalued. I also looked at a team example in capturing these player effects. For example, the Chicago Bears. Eddie Jackson has a target probability effect of 0.11, which also means that he has targeted 11% more than the average defensive back. His completion probability effect shows that he is he causes a completion 27% less than the average defensive back, so he causes incompletions a lot. Bryce Callahan, on the other hand, he is targeted 22% less than the average defensive back, but causes a completion 3% more than the average defensive back. So here, a suggestion for a team would be to place Callahan against a top receiver and basically force a throw against Jackson. Callahan is unlikely to be targeted, and then you can throw against somebody who has a very, very low completion probability. So there are a few implications of these two models. There's no known correlation between target probability and completion probability. So even if a player has a really low completion probability, that doesn't mean that most teams are throwing less to him. On the player personnel side, it's, this can be a really beneficial way to look for undervalued players. For example, in this Tavon Young case, you can look at his film to see if he's shutting down his receiver before the pass is thrown. From the offensive side, this can be used to investigate if some defensive backs should be targeted more or less. And from the defensive side, you can create optimal combinations of defensive backs like I showed in the Chicago Bears case. So moving forward, I think there are a lot of ways that this can be used and it's a really great framework kind of for that target probability. Two things that I would love to do is to kind of break down those player effects to either the right versus left side of the field. So can a player who has a low target probability effect shut down his side of the field and basically force a throw to the right side? I also think that this can be used to evaluate the effect of shadowing and double coverage as shadowing has been pretty prevalent in the NFL the last couple of years. Thank you for coming.